Oh, I hope you'll always look at me just like that, especially when there are other people present. Mr. Worthing, rise, sir, from that semi-recumbent posture. It is most indecorous. Mama, I must beg you to retire. This is no place for you. Besides, Mr. Worthing is not quite finished yet. Yes. Finished what, may I ask? I am engaged to Mr. Worthing, Mama. <laughs> Pardon me, you are not engaged to anyone. <laughs> when you do become engaged to someone, I, or your father, should his health permit, will inform you of the fact. <laughs> An engagement should come upon a young girl as a surprise, a pleasant or unpleasant, as the case may be. <laughs> it is hardly a matter that she should be allowed to arrange for herself. And now I have a few questions to put to you, Mr. Worthing. <laughs> While I'm making these inquiries, you, Gwendolyn, will wait for me below in the carriage. Mama! In the carriage, Gwendolyn! Take a seat, Mr. Worthing. Thank you, Lady Brackle. I prefer standing. Well, I feel bound to tell you that you're not down on my list of eligible young men. <laughs> Although I have the same list as a dear Duchess of Bolton has. <laughs> we work together, in fact. However, I'm quite ready to enter your name should your answers be what a really affectionate mother requires. Do you smoke? Well, yes, I must admit I smoke. I am glad to hear it. A man should always have an occupation of some kind. <laughs> there are far too many idle men in London as it is. How old are you? Twenty-nine. A very good age to be married. I have always been of the opinion that a man who desires to get married should either know everything or nothing. Which do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing, Lady Bracken. No, I am pleased to hear it. <laughs> I do not approve of anything that tampers with natural ignorance. <laughs> ignorance is like a delicate, exotic fruit. Touch it, and the bloom is gone. <laughs> the whole theory of modern education is radically unsound, uh, but fortunately in England, at any rate, education produces no effect whatsoever. <laughs> if it did, it would prove a serious danger to the upper classes. What is your income? Between seven and eight thousand a year. In land or in investments? In investments, chiefly. Hmm. That is satisfactory. What between the duties expected from one during one's lifetime and the duties exacted from one after one's death, land has ceased to be either a profit or a pleasure. It gives one position but prevents one from keeping it up. That's all that can be said about land. Well, I have a country house, of course, with some land attached to it. About 1,500 acres, I believe. But I don't depend on that for my real income. In fact, as far as I can make out, the poachers are the only people who can make anything out of it. A country house? Hmm. How many bedrooms? <laughs> uh, well, that point can be cleared up afterwards. <laughs> you have a townhouse, I hope. A girl with a simple, unspoiled nature like Gwendolyn could hardly be expected to reside in the country. Well, I own a house in Belgrave Square. What number in Belgrave Square? Uh, 149. <laughs> The unfashionable side. <laughs> I thought there was something. <laughs> However, that could easily be altered. Now, do you mean the fashion or the side? Both, <laughs> if necessary, I presume. <laughs> and now, to minor matters. Are your parents living? I have lost both my parents. To lose one parent, Mr. Worthing, may be regarded as a misfortune. But to lose both looks like carelessness. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your father? He was evidently a man of some wealth. Was he born in what the radical papers call the purple of commerce? Or did he rise from the ranks of aristocracy? I'm afraid I really don't know. The fact is, Lady Bracknell, I said I had lost my parents. It would be nearer the truth to say that my parents seem to have lost me. I don't actually know who I am by birth. 
I was, well, I was found. Found? The late Mr. Thomas Cardew, an elderly gentleman of a very kind and charitable reputation, found me and gave me the name of Worthing because he happened to have a first class ticket for Worthing in his pocket at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Worthing is a place in Sussex. <laughs> It is a seaside resort. Where did this charitable gentleman who had a first class ticket for a seaside resort find you? In a handbag. <laughs> a handbag? Yes, Lady Brackle, I, I was in a handbag. Uh, a somewhat large black leather handbag with handles to it. Well, a rather ordinary handbag, in fact. In what locality did this Mr. Thomas Cardew come across this ordinary handbag? In the cloakroom at Victoria Station. Well, it was given to him in, mis in mistake for his own. The cloakroom at Victoria Station? Yes, the Brighton line. The line is immaterial, Mr. Worthing. <laughs> I confess, I am somewhat bewildered by what you have just told me. To be warm. Or at any rate, bread in a handbag, or whether it had handles or not, seems to me to display a contempt for the ordinary decencies of family life, which reminds one of the worst excesses of the French Revolution. <laughs> As to the particular locality in which the handbag was found, a cloakroom at a railway station might serve to conceal a social indiscretion, but it could hardly be regarded as an assured basis for a recognized position in good society. May I ask then what would you advise me to do? I need hardly say I would do anything in the world to ensure Gwendolyn's happiness. I would strongly advise you, Mr. Worthing, to try and acquire some relations as soon as possible and to make a definite effort to produce at any rate a one pelt of either sex before the season is quite over. I don't see how I could possibly manage to do that. I can produce the handbag at any moment. It is in my dressing room at home. Well, I really think that should satisfy you, Lady Bracknell. Me, sir? What has it to do with me? You can hardly imagine that I and Lord Bracknell would ever dream of allowing our only daughter, a girl brought up with the utmost care, to marry into a cloakroom and form an alliance with a parson. <laughs> you will, of course, understand that all communication between yourself and my daughter must cease immediately from this moment. Good day, Mr. Worthing. Good day. Lady Bracknell. <laughs>